Hello everyone. We will continue the topic parameters. And now in this video, we will study more variations of parameters or we can say we will study more options available as a part of parameters. And in the previous video, we studied that if I want to give a default value, I can provide using which particular keyword default. Suppose I'm commenting that default value. We all know if we want to comment a portion which is in between the line, I can you go for double quotes. I'm activating the program. There is no default value now for order number. Our next thing is how you can make a parameter or select option mandatory. The same thing is applicable for select option also. Suppose whenever I am running the program, customer is saying this order number is mandatory. It needs to be mandatory. It means compulsory we need to pass the value. So whenever you want to make a parameter or select option to treat as mandatory, you need to key use the keyword obligatory. It is a keyword itself. Whenever you will use the keyword obligatory, then in that case, that particular input will treat as mandatory. Compulsory, you need to give the input. Suppose if I am running the program, I am not giving any input to the order number. And if I directly clicking on to the execute button, you can see I am getting the error fill in all required fields. And how and how I am getting this error? Because we use the keyword obligatory. So whenever you want to make any input to treat as mandatory, you need to use the keyword obligatory. Now we will move on to further variation or further option. Next thing is how you can create radio buttons, radio buttons. We all know we will select the radio button or we will deselect the radio button. So yes, it means radio button will accept the single value. Single value means either it will be select or it will be deselect. So whenever you want to go for single input, you will always go for what parameters. So now we will learn how to create radio buttons with the help of parameters. So we'll go for radio button creation using parameters. Suppose I'm writing parameters. Now, I will give some name to the radio button. Suppose I am saying P underscore R1. I already told you a good programmer always follows the best naming convention. So I gave the name of the radio button starting with P underscore. Now I will write type radio button group. Okay, suppose firstly I will write type C radio button group suppose i am saying r1 now what is the meaning of this line i am creating a radio button what is the name of radio button p underscore r1 it is of which type character type have you seen i have not given any length if i will not give any length it means by default this P underscore R1, but the default length of P underscore R1, it is 1. So whenever you are not specifying the length, it will take 1. It will take 1. Now I use the keyword radio button group and I gave some name to the radio button group. Now we will understand this particular thing by real world example. Suppose you are appearing for so many online tests. Suppose you have a question. So that question has four options in the form of radio button. So what are those four radio buttons? 
those are p underscore r1 suppose i am creating p underscore r2 p underscore r3 p underscore r4 so all those four are those four are four options of that question but those four options belongs to one question only and what is that one question that question is your radio button group yes in real world this is the case we have a question. Suppose this, that question has four options in the form of radio button. So all those four options belongs to one question only. Same thing is here. I am creating radio buttons, but ultimately those radio buttons belongs to how many radio button group? One radio button group. Now, because see, whenever you have a question, at a time, you can only go for one answer if it is in the form of radio button. And same thing is applicable here also. Suppose I am creating one more radio button. So I am writing parameters P underscore R2 type C radio button group. Now I am going for same to same radio button group. It means these two radio buttons belongs to this radio button group. And what is the name of radio button group? R1. Suppose I am going for third radio button also. P underscore R3 type C radio button group R1. So all these three radio buttons belongs to which radio button group? Single radio button. Now, we all know we need to give the description. We need to provide the selection text. And here I will cover an important point because this is the mistake, which we it is a mistake, especially for the initial level people. Suppose if I am going for go to, have you seen as of now my program is inactive, it is not active. Suppose if I will go for go to text element selection text. I will go for yes. Now, if you see the selection text, only one thing is coming. That is order number. Why other things are not visible? I took three parameters, but why I took three parameters more, but why they are not appearing there? Because my program is inactive. So always, always make a practice after activation only. So whatever you are giving, it will be visible after activation of program only. So never, never forgot to activate the program. And this is the mistake for the initial level people. Now my program is active. So if I will go for go to text element selection text. Now you can see all these three radio buttons name are coming. Suppose I am saying my first radio button is sum. Second radio button is subtraction. And suppose third radio button is division. I will activate. Never forgot to activate this. I will go to back button. Now, whenever I will run the program, you can see we have one input and we have how many radio button? Three radio button. And at a time, only how many radio button is stick? One radio button is stick. Whatever the first radio button is there, SAP make that particular radio button as stick. This is stick. I can go for this also. I can go for this also. Suppose many time customer is saying this first radio button is by default tick. I want to go for other radio buttons as tick. So if you want to go for other radio buttons as tick, we already cover. You need to give the default value. You need to give the default value. If I want the second radio button to be by default tick, I will use which particular keyword default. Now, always, always, it's a golden rule and we cover so many times. Whenever something is true, the value is capital X. If something is not true, 
value is space. It's a golden rule in SAP. Now we want the second radio button to be ticked. So, but the default value we will put capital X, capital X. Capital X means true. It is it the, we are setting the value to true. We want the second radio button to be ticked. So we put default value as capital X. If you are not going for anything, by default, first radio button will be ticked. Now, if I will go to execute, you can see our second radio button is ticked now. So it's an important concept in case of radio button. Whenever you are creating radio button, you should assign them to one radio button group. And this is all about our real world. Whenever you are appearing for any exam also, the four to five options which are in the form of radio button, they belongs to one question only. That question is radio button group and all those four to five are individual option and same thing is applicable here also. So what is the summary of the video? In this video, we studied two more variations. What is first variation? Obligatory. Whenever you are using the word obligatory, it is compulsory for the user to give the input. Without input, output will not come. Compulsory, we need to give the input, else we will get an error. Fill in all required fields. Then we covered how to create radio buttons. Whenever you want to give, give radio buttons, we all know radio button length is always, always one. So you need to give the name of the radio button. You need to assign those radio buttons to one radio button group. By default, first radio button will be ticked. If you want the other radio buttons to be ticked, you need to pass the default value. You all know how to give the default value using default and you need to give capital X. Capital X means true. And important part we covered, if you will not activate the program, you will not be able to see the selection text here. So firstly, activate the program, then provide the selection text after that. In the next video, we will cover few more variations of parameters. So that's it in this video. Thank you.